I call it a dying art form just for the simple fact that a lot of people say they're interested in learning, but most of them don't. Not a lot of people do this. Uh, it used to be way back in the day when there was a bunch of cowboys running around that there was leather crafters and leather smiths everywhere. They made holsters and belts and you know saddles and all this and really there's not too many people who do it anymore. I'm a leather craftsman in Austin, Texas. I started leather crafting about four years ago by making a dog collar for my dog of all things and I just couldn't find a good one so I decided to make one myself. I make wallets, belts, um, pretty much anything, purses, mainly guitar straps. Um, I do a lot of different leather items, dog collars still. Uh, the process for making a guitar strap, uh, it's a lot of processes but uh, it starts out by me cutting a three inch strip out of a double shoulder from a cow. After I cut the three inch strip, I cut the shape of the guitar strap from a template that I have that's pre-made. cut the template or cut the shape of it out. I then carve or tool any design I want in it. I use um, old fashioned saddle making tools. I use what's called a swivel knife which actually carves the item out of into the leather. It actually carves it. Then I use little things like bevelers and pear shaders and you know little small leather crafting tools to manipulate the leather to get the form and the shape that I want. I use a uh, sheep's wool remnants. I use those to apply the finishes and the uh, antique gels and dyes to it. I do a resist technique on a lot of the guitar straps that I do. Resist technique is where you get the finish. After you've carved uh, something into the leather, you paint the finish onto the carved item and then you put your uh, stain or antique over it and the stainer antique doesn't go where the finish has been put so basically it resists the antique and it leaves the leather a natural color. After I dye it I put a clear coat over it so the dye doesn't come off and then after I dye it and finish it I will attach a lining to the back, some kind of lining, either suede or deer tan cowhide. I attach the lining with uh, contact cement. I then sew the lining on to make sure it's on there permanently and it's durable. And then I just uh, put any adjustment holes that I need at the end of it. A saddle maker's groover uh, sets like a channel. You can adjust the blade on it, and what it does is you run along the side of your leather piece and it creates a little channel which countersinks your stitching.
the handmaking style more as opposed to the mass production work. Um, it, it looks handmade, it seems to have more appeal to the customers, and I think it just looks better overall. It doesn't look like something you can just pick up at Guitar Center or some other store. Stitching I, I do is called a saddle stitch. It's where you use two needles and do basically a figure eight. You run two needles into the same hole opposite directions and it makes kind of a figure eight all the way down. It's the strongest stitch in the world. It's stronger than even a machine can do. Like I said, I started with the dog collar, but I, I started loving it after I did my first project, my dog collar. I started loving it because it just relaxed me and I enjoyed it a whole lot. And I got to be creative again, which I haven't been creative in a long time. I used to take a lot of photography and I used to paint and I used to sculpt. Um, but I just didn't do that anymore and I found an outlet for my creativity. So it just kind of became second nature for me after a while. belong to a local leather guild where we try to keep that alive. Um, we, you know, we try to keep that whole art going and we try to teach people and make sure everybody knows that leather crafting is still alive and it's still a, you know, a wonderful art to enjoy. <laughs>